In this video, we'll take a quick look at how we can verify our implementation of a dynamic multipoint VPN. Let's begin. Dynamic multipoint VPNs are going to use these ingredients, and starting with a device that has a fixed IP address, one of our routers is going to act as a hub, and it's going to have a multipoint GRE interface. The rest of our devices can act as spokes. They can have dynamically assigned IP addresses, but they need to be reachable. And they also are going to have multipoint GRE interfaces. When these spokes come online, they are going to phone home and they are going to register with the device acting as the hub in the DMVPN network. That registration is going to allow a logical GRE path between the hub and each of the spokes. Now on top of that GRE to keep it protected, we're going to use IPsec to encrypt the data and keep it confidential. A routing protocol like OSPF or EIGRP could be used to advertise the spokes networks up to the hub. And through the hub, those networks can be advertised to the other spokes as well. And then the magical part of DMVPN kicks in. If R2 needs to reach this remote network of 10.4.4, it's going to see it reachable out of its multipoint GRE interface, and it's going to use a protocol called NHRP, which stands for Next Hop Resolution Protocol, to make a request and ask, I need to know what the address is of the router that has that 10.4.4 network. And once R2 gets a response back, the magic is that R2 and R4 can build a direct connection to each other and bypass having to forward traffic through the hub. So now we had previously two spokes that didn't know each other's IP addresses, but now they've not only built the GRE tunnel, but it's also protected via IPsec. So with R1 as our hub, let's take a look at a few show commands here on R2 to help verify the working pieces of DMVPN. So on R2, let's do a show IP interface brief. I'm going to do a pipe to say, please exclude any output where it has the word unassigned in it. And here we have our tunnel interface, which is a multipoint GRE tunnel. And we have the interface gig 1 slash 0 that is connecting us to the internet. Now R2 should be configured to know that R1 is its next hop resolution protocol server, or the acronym for that is NHS. And it should have an NHRP mapping for that server. So if we use the command show IP NHRP, by the way, that command will work on the hub as well as on the clients. This command says, yep, I've got a mapping for 15001, which is the reachable address of R1, which is our hub. And this also indicates that the tunnel interface on R1 has a logical address of 12216.0.1. If we want to see the details regarding the configuration of our own local tunnel interface, we'll do a show run for interface tunnel 0. The tunnel interface on R2 is where R2 learned about its NHRP server. So it knows it's at 1621610.1. It also has the mapping that says, okay, to reach that 1621610.1, the interface address is 15001. And this entry is what caused that static NHRP mapping to show up using the command show IP NHRP. If we want to verify the routing protocols that are running here on R2, we can do a show IP protocols. We're going to need a routing protocol to advertise the local routes over the GRE tunnel. In this topology, we're running EIGRP, autonomous system number 777. And the network statement of 10 is going to include the 10 network here that is directly connected to R2. And the 1616 network statement is covering the GRE interface, which is including it as part of EIGRP as well. Now, because IPsec is also running on top of this, if we wanted to validate our crypto ICEMP policies, we could do a show crypto ICEMP policy. And we would need to have compatible Ike phase one policies across all devices that are participating in the DMVPN. In this policy, it's stating that we're going to use a pre-shared key for the authentication of Ike phase one. So if we want to see what that key is, we can do a show crypto ICEMP key, and that'll show us all the keys we have configured. So the all zeros is a wildcard saying, hey, I'll use this key with anybody. And the actual key value is Cisco123. If we want to see the transform sets for Ike phase two, which is the IPsec tunnel, we can do a show crypto IPsec transform dash set. Here it'll show us any configured transform sets along with some default transform sets that came free of charge with the iOS. If we want to see any existing Ike phase one tunnels that are in place, we can do a show crypto ISACEMP SA. SA stands for Security Association. And currently we have one Ike phase one tunnel, and that would be between us, R2, and R1. And if we wanted to see the details regarding, okay, what was used to create and establish that Ike phase one tunnel? What was the hashing? What was the encryption? We can do a show crypto ISACEMP SA detail, and that'll give us those details. So this command indicates we used AES, SHA, pre-shared key, Diffie-Hellman group 14, and that's how much lifetime we have left for that tunnel. The default is one day, which means this tunnel has been up for approximately 30 minutes. Another really fun command that I like is show crypto engine connections active. And that'll show us our Ike phase one and our Ike phase two on one screen. So this represents our Ike phase one tunnel. And these two represent two halves of our IPsec. The top one is our inbound tunnel coming from R1. 
And the second one is the outbound tunnel. So each of these are representing a separate essay, a security association. And we can tell about the in and out just based on the encryption and decryption. Packets that are coming into us, we're going to decrypt. Packets that we're sending that are encrypted are going to increment the encrypt counter. Another really cool command is show DMVPN, and we can add on the keyword detail as well. So here's the command, show DMVPN detail. And at the moment, because we only have one connection in place that's between us and R1, it has the NBMA address, that's the interface address that's reachable, as well as the logical address of that tunnel. It's been up for about 31 minutes, and the S represents it is a static mapping. And if we scroll down in the output of the show DMVPN detail command, it'll have the details regarding the encryption. So this top part is referring to Ike phase one, and this bottom one is referring to Ike phase two. Now if R2 tried to send a ping packet, for example, down to the 10.4.4 network, for the first packet or so, it would go ahead and send those through the hub, but it would also make an NHRP request saying, hey, I need to know what this interface address is of R4, so I can build a direct connection to R4 and not have to send traffic through the hub. And when that occurs, it'll also trigger Ike phase one to happen between R2 and R4, as well as Ike phase two, and thereby new sets of security associations will be set up between R2 and R4. So we do a simple ping. I'm gonna do a ping to 10.4.4.4. That's an interface on R4 on that local network. I'm gonna source it from my local interface on 10.2.2. We'll do a repeat of one. Now it's very likely that first packet went through the hub, but also what just happened is the NHRP resolution was done. And then a future packets we send are gonna be sent directly to R4. And R4 is gonna be able to reply directly to R2 over their newfound connection and the new IPsec security associations that they're going to build dynamically. So if we hit the up arrow key one time and did that same ping again, see how it felt the same? <laughs> but in reality, it's taking a direct path. Now one way we can verify that is doing the show DMVPN detail again and press enter. So we have some additional mappings. We have the tunnel interface of R4 along with the NBMA or the reachable interface address of R4 as well. And we learned that via the next top resolution protocol. And then once we learned that, we also negotiated Ike phase one and Ike phase two between R2 and R4. So we're gonna have some new security associations there. By scrolling down a little further in the output and taking a look at the crypto session details, this confirms the Ike phase one that's currently happening between R2 and R4. This also confirms the actual IPsec tunnel that's set up between R2 and R4. I have had a great time. I'm glad you joined me for this video. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.